everyone, it's Janet Wakelin with RemarkablyCreated.com. In today's One Take Wonder video, I want to share some tips for you on using the detailed gate thinlets, and I want to take a moment to invite you to my week of gates. What we'll be doing is we will be featuring a whole week of gates. Think of it as Shark Week, but with paper crafting, and I think a whole lot more fun. So the product that I'm talking about is our detailed gate thinlets. And you have this beautiful gate here. You have this element here, which creates a really nice outline um, or a matching piece on the cardstock. And you'll see it used in another element. And then you have a little key and a little lock. So let me start by first giving you some tips for working with this thinlet. The cardstock, if you want to have these two edges here that fold behind so that your gate can open by sl slicing it, you're going to need a card piece of cardstock that's slightly larger than five inches. If you simply want a card, you know, a gate that would be an element on the front of your card, then you don't need these two pieces over here. Okay, you only need inside of that part right there. And you're going to be able to have an element on your card. What I have found is um, the precision plate works great for me. I do find that when I'm working with it, this is a new tip I got from one of my teammates and it's brilliant and it does work, is I first run my um, thin like this through the Big Shot. Then I go ahead and I turn it and I run it through this direction and then I turn it again and run it. What you'll find is that your Big big Shot may have pressure points and so um, in order to really get it to push down evenly across the whole thing, turning it a few times as you run it through will help with the cutting. In addition, when you pull it out, if you flip it over, you're going to be able to tell right away. So if this was laying in here, I'd be able to look to see if indeed it's cut the whole way through. If not, I might want to shim it or again run it back through at least one more time so that I have it. Once you've run it through, Working with your Sizzix brush, the mat, is going to be a great thing for you. I just have this tiny little aluminum foil dish pan. I keep um, one by each one of my big shots. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to lay this down. And then you're just going to start to give it that nice, good rub kind of pushing things through. You can hold it up to the light to see if they're coming. If there's still a few that are catching, you can always use a paper piercing tool for those few extra. Or again, once you get it out, if you have a few little stubborn pieces, you can just kind of come in here with the paper piercing tool. I always keep, again, this little um, foil dish that you can just get at the dollar store in the cooking aisle, the brush, and the little paper piercing tool right by the Big Shot. And what's nice is then all the elements I can just shake off and then right into a trash can. But it does keep things nice and tidy um, when I'm working at my Big Shot station. So that works. Another thing for you that's going to be your friend with these elements here is your Sizzix permanent adhesive sheets. You're going to want to put your cardstock in or your designer paper in before you run it through the Big Shot because then what happens is, is once you've run it through the Big Shot, it actually die cuts right through and now on the back of this I have adhesive and I can just pull it right up and this is sticky and ready to be added to my element. So just some tips right there for you for working with it. So now let's just take a look at some of the pieces and I'm going to give you some more tips and um, show you two cards and then again remember you're going to want to come back all week to RemarkablyCreated.com to see what I do with many of these fun pieces. So with the gate remember that you have this large extra piece on the side and we're going to fold one and cut one in just a minute so that you can wrap it around behind. If you're cutting shorter, you'll have, you won't have that wide piece. Can you see the difference right there? Okay, we're going to set that aside because I want to use that to showcase something in just a second. But let's just pull these just to show you. Um, a lot of times when we think of a gate, we think of it as wrought iron, and of course it's in the Halloween section, so of course everybody's mind drifts to, you know, spooky haunted mansions. But let me tell you, pretend like it's not in the Halloween section because this gate is anything but spooky. So there it is in vellum. Really pretty piece there. Here we have it in copper. Look at that. Oh, so stunning. Excuse the little pieces stuck to it. Here we cut it from some of the wood paper. Of course, we had to do a black gate just because. 
So you've got your black gate. This one is from the same crumb cake, so it's probably a little hard to see tone on tone, but even look how pretty that is tone on tone. Really, really pretty. This one we cut from designer paper. I was just curious to see how that might work. I didn't like this one, but I did like this one with the crackle, so it looks like an old, like the it's been painted and now the paint's chipping off of it, that chippy paint look, so I did like that one. Of course, it's really pretty in espresso. Here we have it in rich razzleberry. So again, just playing with the different elements. This one I'm going to hold up real close for you, see if you can see the wood. Oh, you're going to love it, and we'll do some more close-ups. So this one we did um, as a winter theme, and we'll put a snowy seam behind it with some of our new holiday paper. So we did it that way. And let's um, take this piece for right now and use this as the one to showcase what I was talking about with the element. So this one was cut with the wider piece, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to score those edges. And I'm scoring just beyond where the die cuts are. And now I can go ahead and fold that element. We'll give it a crease with our bone folder here in just a second. Okay, so, so we've just gone ahead and created that, um, that element right there, that little crease. And if I took my cardstock, that's going to fit over the edge and allow me to um, create a gate that opens. So now, in order to have the gate open, I do need to cut it. So we're going to go ahead and let's move our scoring tool up out of the way. Make sure we have the center of that in the track. And now we're going to cut right through the middle. We'll set that up and out of the way. We're going to grab our adhesive, and actually I would use tear and tape if I was doing this again, just thinking about that just now because I'm assuming that this gate is going to get opened and closed a lot because it's going to be, oh my gosh, that's so clever. And so having that little bit of extra tear and tape, that little extra oomph that tear and tape provides could be a good thing. And now let's go ahead and put the whole thing on our card front. And again, you're going to have to come back and see me during gate week to see how we finalize that. But, ah, oh, come join me in the garden. Isn't that beautiful? Reminds me of one of my favorite hymns about the garden. So, there you go. So that's something fun with this. Okay, so we'll set that aside for just now, and I'll bring in one of these just to show you. This was a fun one that I put on my Facebook page and actually on my blog recently, and I asked people to tell me if it was morbid or creative, kind of a play on the pearly gates, and we had a lot of fun, and there was a lot of cool ideas offered up. So let's keep looking at the possibilities of this gate here for just a second. When I looked at this gate, I saw a lot more than just what's here. We have the ability, and I'm just going to use snips for right now, and so right here we have a beautiful element that will look really, really pretty um, on a card, on the top of a wedding invitation, on a tag, on the bottom of a bag. Look at that. Isn't that just stunning? Look how pretty just that element is. The same thing here. We have... Um, just these little elements here so you can use that almost looks like the shutter on a window or of course I can um, you know put that at the top of a card for a fun little element I need to pop the rest of these little things out you can have some flowers growing over it so you've got that fun element this here can actually be a smaller gate if you're wanting something that's not as big as this whole gate here we've got that pretty house and we've got a bicycle that would be pretty leaned up against something like that so you've got that pretty element just to show you again playing so that you could see it here in black I did cut and have some fun with a couple of other elements look at this in silver is not that beautiful so can you see that with a pretty greeting I can see that turned into stained glass as well talking about making the fence smaller again and those elements so, I mean, there's just so many pieces with this gate or possibilities. There's a smaller gate with the fancy part, or again, you can just make it a small gate looking at um, some of those options and, and playing and things like that. So then, 
remember that there's another piece, there's another element to that. So again, making a wrap for an invitation, you could do something like that. In this case, this is going to be the top of a card, and you've got that pretty little tab right there happening. Um, just looking at those different elements and pieces. So this will be just a pretty little element to add to things. In this case, we extended the, we kept the, the die just inside the frame, and we just made a sweet little tag. Look at that. And here's a finished card to show you what I'm talking about. So here's that element. It was cut. Here's the card. And we cut this end, and then we tucked a piece of designer paper underneath and embellished it. Isn't that beautiful? So it just adds another fun little element. And then one last thing is I did go ahead. Oh, I need to find all these pieces I wanted to show you. They went flying somewhere. I wanted to show you the lock and the key. Oh, my goodness. We'll find them at the last minute. You'll see them on a project. But here at least is the lock. The key is absolutely adorable. But then I also, with really thick white cardstock, I went ahead and did the fence. And then I've gone ahead and I've used it with embossing paste to create a fun background. And then I'm working on a Halloween piece here. There's the gate that will be the background on this canvas. So lots and lots of possibilities with this beautiful gate. Make sure that you come visit me at RemarkablyCreated.com so that you can see all of the ideas. There'll be one posted a day for seven days. Also, come visit me and um, request a holiday catalog if you have yet to get your hands on that holiday catalog or for ordering information. This became available on September 1st. So thank you guys for popping by.